Hey everyone. I had some questions after my DevTO presentation earlier about my workflow and uh, my tool chain. So I thought I would get into that a little bit because there's some great tools available for both JavaScript development but uh, Angular as well. At the backbone of my tool chain, I'm using Yeoman. And this consists of three tools, Yo, Grunt, and Bower. Yo being a scaffolding tool that will generate a lot of boilerplate. Uh, Grunt being a task runner that gives a lot of really, really useful tools available at the command line. My live reload is an example of that. And Bower being dependency management for JavaScript files. This is very useful if you have external dependencies on jQuery or Lodash or you know D3 or something to that effect. And you want to make sure that your application always has certain versions or above available. This is very similar to how uh, NPM defines how how a node project defines how to grab files via npm so best way to view this is to kind of dive into things i'm going to use yeoman to actually create a new project um, through webstorm this is my editor of choice it has fantastic javascript functionality built into it from the ground up so um what i want to do is create a new project i'm going to type yo for yeoman um, and I have a generator installed called Angular. So I'm going to say yo Angular and the name of the project that I want to create. So I'm going to call this workflow demo. And what this is going to do is it's all node based. So it's going to ask me a few questions and then pull in a lot of uh, the external dependencies. So do I want to include Bootstrap? Yes. Uh, do I want to use SCSS version of Twitter Bootstrap with Compass? Uh, no, I'm not interested in that. Uh, which modules would I like to include? So this is asking me if I want to use uh, Angular Resource, Angular Cookies, and Angular Sanitize. Angular Resource lets me connect to RESTful endpoints very easily. Uh, Angular Cookies is for cookie management, and Angular Sanitize lets me sanitize any input fields that I have. Because I have a single page JavaScript app, anybody that types in something nefarious into the text box, uh, um, either on purpose or through cut and paste, can actually wreak havoc with the application. So you usually want to sanitize your inputs. I'm going to leave these all in just kind of as defaults. Uh, you can remove them if you think you don't need them and they're going to add bloat though. Um, so what it's doing is it's pulling in all of those uh, dependencies that Yeoman wants to set up. Um, it's getting Grunt ready for me. It's getting Bower ready for me. It's setting up a, a sane application structure all of those nice things that you would expect a scaffolding system to do. It's very similar to Rails uh, and uh, how it, their generators work as well. So this will just take a few more seconds and should be complete. And we should have a full project that's uh, ready to go, ready, already scaffolded out. Um, so back into WebStorm, you'll see on the left-hand side I've got this Angular demo, workflow demo. Um, I'm just waiting for it to refresh because uh, there's a whole bunch of files that have shown up in, in this directory. And have to synchronize this. There we are, perfect. So now in here we see um, what Yeoman has created. We have this app directory which contains all of our development focused uh, JavaScript files, HTML, CSS, that kind of thing. Um, this is very separate from what you would actually be distributing out to a live server because Grunt actually lets you run all kinds of nice uh, pre-processing tasks. It can minify, it can convert less to less or uh, SAS to actual, the actual CSS files and do that all uh, in an automatic fashion. So all of our development files live within this app directory, and um, that's where we spend most of our time doing work. Node modules is um, obvious to anybody that's used Node before. It's where all of the external uh, dependencies for various Node modules get downloaded to. And then there's this test directory, which is where all my unit tests and end-to-end -end tests are going to end up being built out in. Um, speaking of testing, really, really great framework for running unit tests is called Karma Runner. And this was built by the this was built by the Angular team and it works fantastically for testing JavaScript and specifically 
for testing Angular-based applications. Um, I highly recommend if you've never run into Karma, watch the video on their on their main page. It really introduces you to the power of the tool. So I'll be doing a little presentation as well on this uh, later, and you can check that out. But for now, I just want to focus on the workflow and uh, how Grunt really simplifies all of the day-to-day -day things that I do um, in my development workflow. So getting back into Grunt, um, everything is defined in a Grunt file. This is very similar to how Ant has an Ant file. It defines all the various tasks that can be run and uh, what you're creating. Um, so, in a, but also in a very, very clean and easy to understand way. All of these grunt tasks are loaded in as node modules. So everything being node-based makes it very easy to add new grunt tasks, uh, publish new grunt tasks as this ecosystem grows. So it's, it's very, very simple to uh, extend the power of what the defaults are within, uh, within Yeoman. So let's have a look at the actual grunt file. Um, the most interesting one right off the bat is probably the live reloading um, web server. And this is really, really convenient because um, it lets me see in real time what my updates are. When I change CSS, the server picks it up. When I change my HTML, the server picks it up. When I change JavaScript, exactly the same thing, the server picks it up. Um, and in this config file, you'll see that there's this live reload option here. Um, this is all based on the node connect um, package, which is a very, very lightweight web server. It uh, runs locally and hooks into one of the one of the grunt um, one of the grunt tasks called live reload and which ends up watching files for changes and will publish new versions of those files to the web server and restart everything for you automatically. Um, let's have a look at this in, in practice. You can look at the documentation and see how this is all defined and configured. Um, it's actually quite clear, really, really easy to set up and add new tasks and new things to watch. Um, but this is all set up for the defaults that Yeoman defines. Um, so there are a couple of ways of launching this live server. So if, in the terminal, uh, the easiest way um, I can you can actually say grunt server and if we scroll down to the bottom of this file you'll see that that task is actually defined way at the bottom here so we've got um, this grunt test grunt default grunt server and this is what it will do when I type grunt server same way ant defines um, the various targets that you can use so what this is going to do is going to launch a uh, connect server that uh, watches all my files in my app directory for changes and you'll see this nice uh, you know little bootstrap um, app that's being loaded here and uh, what we can do is actually to show that this library reloading is working I can jump into my application um, go into my views and update this main view and say hello and we can put my name in here um, really easily. Let's make it so that we can actually see the see the web page and see that it changes without me having to refresh. So just say hello Alan and we'll save it and you'll see on the right hand side it's already updated um, in real time. I didn't have to touch anything um, and you'll notice in the terminal down here that uh, you know once it Watch, once the, ta the watch task fired, it actually then uh, triggered what it was supposed to do. People can register, uh, various grunt tasks can register to listen to watch and then um, kick off what they need to do when certain things occur. Really convenient. Um, and this really speeds up workflow because I don't have to worry about clearing my cache. That's all taken care of. You, you know that what gets your live reloaded is actually um, what you're typing in into your editor. It saves a ton of time in the long run. One of the nice things though is with WebStorm is that I don't actually have to run this server from the terminal um, within WebStorm. I can actually set up a build target for it. So I'm going to bring the server down and I'll show you how to configure one of these build targets. Click on that little arrow, go to edit configurations, and I'm going to add a Node.js application. Um, let's call this uh, grunt server. And 
And what we want to do is actually, um, we're running a node app, and the JavaScript file that we want to have it actually run is uh, our instance of grunt, which is actually at user local bin grunt. Um, and the pr parameters we want to pass to it is server, much like I ran it before by saying grunt server. Uh, I'm just basically setting that up within WebStorm so that I can hit a button and it'll kick it off. Um, this is this will also give me a separate tab with that, and I don't have to flip around and uh, between terminal tabs when I'm doing different things. It's just running in the background. Um, so this guy should be set up. I'm calling the grunt server. I'm going to hit OK, and you'll notice at the top it's available. Now I've stopped the one that was running in my terminal. Um, I can hit this little run button and it's going to run this little server um, the same way as I had it before. You'll notice that my browser window kicked off automatically and everything's uh, well and good. Um, you'll notice that this works exactly the same. I can you know, say hello, hello. You'll see on the right hand side it changes back. Um, live reloading is happening. Now it's got its own uh, terminal window as well um, that's running here and uh, Things are just, we're integrating things with, with WebStorm 7 really nicely now. Um, so that's a little bit about the Grunt Live Reload. Really, really convenient. Um, and back in the Grunt file, um, you'll see a whole bunch of other tasks that are really useful. These are quite handy when it comes to deploying your application. And there's actually, when I say Grunt Build, it will go through many of these other tasks. So if I scroll down, um, one of them being this DIST, this dist uh, target, what this will do is actually um, clean, basically clean up my, do a, like a build clean, um, but it will run JS hint to let me know if there's any problems with my JavaScript. Um, if there's any coffee script, it will automatically uh, convert all of that stuff. This but also happens every time my live reload server works. So if I'm writing a coffee script, I don't have to run that uh, preprocessor. It happens automatically. So I get live reloaded coffee script, which is really, really convenient. Um, and uh, there's a whole bunch of minification uh, tasks that can be run. Uh, it's configurable for as much or as little that you want to do in terms of uh, packaging. Um, but Grunt makes it really, really simple and uh, completely automatable which is really, really nice. So as I'm building, um, I have my nice live reload on the right-hand side. Uh, WebStorm is handling um, the running of that now. It's all integrated into my IDE. And um, all of those difficult things that are kind of a pain in, in modern web development have now been automated and are really fast to, to do. Um, next, I'm going to be covering a little bit about test-driven development using uh, Angular, WebStorm, and Karma Runner, which is really, really easy as well. Um, so I hope the overview of, of Bower was uh, useful to you, and uh, hopefully the Karma will be as well.